way it's supposed to work anyway. Everybody else coming? We're waiting for Geo to come down anyways, but it's supposed to be going over now. It's kind of... Are you doing this Zoom this time? Oh, yeah, you're on Zoom. We are. We are on Zoom. Look at that. Look at that. It's live. What, it's... Happened, what happened with Facebook? Oh, it does the both. Oh, it does both. Yeah, it does. So, it's like so fancy whoa. here. How do you do two hey. at once? <laughs> two things at once. So uh, welcome to Whiskey <laughs> Wednesday. All right, we're being live streamed. We got that. Uh, click that up. Welcome to Whiskey Wednesday. Today is Rise, Rise Review. I like it. You like those R's? Lots All right, of. so I picked a, a bunch of different rise that I thought would be fun uh, to do, to taste, um, including the new rye that from Black and, and Willet um, Master Series. So uh, Drew, Drew Culbertson and, uh, and the guys at, at um, Black and put that together. So you're going to have a Willet rye um, in, this, in this round too, which I think is sort of cool. And it's... Uh, Marcella cask, if I remember correctly. When right? we, oh, Madeira cask, Madeira cask. When we get down here, I've got a, I've got got a neat Dave Pickerel story to all right, tell good. about the black. Well, you know what? I really like the fact that I do like the fact that the um, collaboration and the camaraderie that Dave Pickerel always talked about is now being carried on by the guys at Black, sure. which I, I, I do love. The, I do love the fact that I think that's a I think that's better than almost any other tribute that you could give somebody. Yeah. So, all right. So let's start. Uh, hopefully Gio will be coming down in a little bit, but I, I think we should just um, start tasting whiskey because that's always a good way to start. Right. So pick number one on your hip parade, right on your tray, your arrow should be pointing towards you and you'll see that they're etched below each, each cup and starting in the far left, you'll see number one. All right, so grab those. Grab number one, and, and number one is Tin Cup. You got that over there? Yep, it says batch number three of it's, the rye. Does it? It does on the. Oh, so nice of you to join us, David. <laughs> this is when, like, you, you're used to this. When a kid comes in late, and everybody, yeah, you have to give them the hard time. Right? <laughs> All right. So we have about, uh, for people watching at, at home on Facebook Live, there is over 30 people here today uh, enjoying these rise today. So um, so this is Tin Cup. This is actually a sourced whiskey. This is an MGP 95.5 sourced whiskey. Um, Imagine that. Yeah. It's uh, oh. 40, 45% ABV. 45, so it's 90 proof. Now. This is, I thought, was a great place to start because this is sort of a, this is an everyday rye that's done actually really well. Um, this is going to get your, your spice comes into this. You get a little of that spruce in there. A little bit of the herbal. A little herbal. Um, Black it's, licorice. Listen, there's a reason that MGP and everybody sorts them out as the 95.5, which means 95% uh, rye, 5% malted barley. The malted barley is in there basically to... Um, get the fermentation going. It's a little bit easier for um, the yeast to work on uh, malted barley. The enzymes kick off. And Kicks off. And then once it gets rolling and rye, uh, most people, most guys that are in the industry will tell you it's Hard. not, yeah, it's not the dream Hard. grain to work with. Yeah. Uh, it can foam up. It can do a Sticky. lot of funky stuff. It's yeah. It it's sticks to everything. Like, yeah. It foams. I've seen like, I've seen pictures of accidents, accidents <laughs> going on <laughs> with, with rye, but this is a really, I thought this was a great place to start because this is a good solid rye whiskey. All right. This is, um, we have this on right now. This is two bottles for 50 bucks. Yeah, oh, really? So, I mean, at a 90 proof to make drinks, to, to, you know, to drink straight, to, you know, have with a, uh, I, I like ginger and rye. I really like one of my favorite drinks with, with rye, believe it or not, is if you're a New Englander, one of my favorite drinks is Moxie and rye. Moxie and I, oh no, no. Tastes this, desperation and battery acid, in, 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 which is always a good thing. <laughs> in that case, this will be the one time I think I would ever say that I would prefer the New York style. We'll go with the Manhattan rye over the Moxie. Okay, rye. Moxie. Oof. I mean, if you're a true New Englander, <laughs> man, Moxie. But I, any of the uh, the sarsaparillas or the root the, sodas, yeah, sarsaparilla root beer, birch beer, birch beer. I love birch beer. 
Um, if you get the red birch beer, I like the red. Okay. So, <laughs> that's the only time we'll say Manhattan red is okay. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, Pen- but it's Pen- red birch beer. Pennsylvania Dutch birch beer. It's All right. So you guys good. think it's, what do you think of this? Right. I like it. It's good. It's a solid, this is a solid spot to start. So when I was coming up with this, how we were going to sort of put this together, I just wanted a solid place to start. And like I said, this is great. It looks great in the bar. This is, you got company coming over. You can serve rye whiskey. You're not breaking the bank. Yep. All right. Now they're, they're from Colorado. And, they are from Colorado. And I think they're, they're master using distiller, water. Um, oh, what's his name? Oh, the same. Uh, you're thinking of strain of hands. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Who came over from there. Um, before it was available here, a buddy of mine in Colorado sent me the regular 10 cup whiskey, right. American whiskey. Uh, so I was getting that. That's actually really good too. Just for, no, they make solid stuff. I got to tell you, um, American whiskey. The problem with American whiskey is it's a catch all. So anytime you don't know what to call your whiskey, you can yeah. call it American whiskey and you're pretty, pretty safe. I think you, you won't, think, you won't, you won't go afoul of any uh, rules yeah. basically. But the problem with it being a catch all like that is that there's a, a real variety of what is American whiskey. And there's some really nice ones over there and they're usually not that expensive. Yeah. I think, um, I think in their case for the tin cup, the, the regular just whiskey, I think they use second and third fill barrels. Right. And that will, that'll immediately disqualify. Yeah. You. Which is right. what Michter's does as well. American mm-hmm. whiskey, which is also another, another great popular. Yeah. yeah. Um, the other thing with that um, too, is um, there are, they are coming. I heard rumors that, that actually tin cup is coming out with a 10 year old, but it's a bourbon. They, they kept it, they kept, yeah, I, they're not mixing it at all. So it's coming out as a bourbon. And so they got some older barrels. That, that's the rumor I heard. Yeah. I picked it's all over the, the interwebs now because yeah. I just said it on, the, on Facebook Live. But interesting. I'll get in trouble one way or the other. Welcome to my life. All right. What's that? It's on their website that it's coming? Okay. Well, then I, I, didn't let any, I didn't let anything out of the bag then. I'm good for another day. I shall live another day. <laughs> What's that? Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm okay. All right, so um, good place to start. Now let's blow it out of the water. So <laughs> you got a heavy line up here. Yeah, exactly. Uh, number uh, two is from uh, Proof and Wood. David is a friend of mine who's been uh, doing. Now a lot of this is still he's using sources. This is an MGP source. All right, this is the this is the rye. Cool. He sent me a bunch of barrels. As a matter of fact, he's sending me more barrels. So um, uh, samples to, tr- to, to try. Um, this one here was barrel number uh, 26. Because this is our, t- and it's named Bully. I was going to ask, Who's why is it 26 Bully? president. Is, is this going to push me around? <laughs> no, it's, it's different. Bully. Now do you know? Yeah. yeah. 26 president? Theodore. There you go. Thank you, Teddy. Teddy. Yep. Teddy Roosevelt. So uh, Randall and I named this one uh, after Teddy Roosevelt. We said and we didn't want to call it Teddy Roosevelt. So we called it Bully. Nice. So this is uh, around a hundred dollars, ninety nine ninety nine, I believe. It's uh, fifty three point seven five ABV. Okay, yeah. I'll, I'll curl your toes. I love this one. And we pumped up the ABV. We, we, I mean, the age on this one. And I think it says, what does it say? What, what's the age on this? Um, we got a little bit more age on this one, too. It's not, not real old. It says distilled in 2013. So okay, when did you so bottle I it? I bottled it what, this, this past year, 2020. 2011. Oh, 2021. 2021. So 2021. So that's what? Do the years. Seven, eight years. <laughs> so it's an eight year old rye. The good part about um, it's delicious. Yeah, isn't is this great? Um, the good part about rye that I find is that um, it loses a lot of its graininess early. So if you try like a two-year-old bourbon, you get you get a lot of grain character. With rye, once you start hitting like two, three, four years, especially in that four-year-old range, a bourbon would have would show still some of that grainy character. Rye doesn't seem to do that. It seems to mature better younger. Um, so if you get an eight or a 10 year old ride, these one, these are actually ones that are got some good age on it. Um, and, 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 and by the way, eight, eight year old in the American whiskey category is a good age. Six to 10 is like a, to me, that's a it's sweet a spot. definite sweet spot. 
for for American whiskeys because the way we're, we're way, way the, the temperature is in, you know, we can say Kentucky, Indiana, um, the type of rick houses that that they use and and where it is in the rick house. These aren't meant these aren't really typically meant to go like that 15, 20 year mark. I mean, you know, we get into the problem with a lot of things that go in that that range is, is the wood spice just completely takes over. And as I always said, if you get so much wood spice, you might as well pour grain alcohol on the church pew and I'm suck it. it up. <clears throat> so um, <laughs> this has still got a lot of great character to it. It's got a lot of it still has that rye spice to it. You can tell it's, it does have a little bit more of that wood spice to it. Um, um, well, but it's a rounded thing. Yeah. And, that, and, you know, I think it I, I don't think it has an alcohol burn no. for something that's, uh, you know, now years. over. Yeah. yeah. Now over that hundred proof. It's got a little bit of that black licorice in there. Too. What's that? Uh, I believe so. I believe this is 95.5. That's, I mean, most MGP rise that are coming out, unless they're saying they're something, 95. are usually 95. I mean, that is a good, a good one to That's go the with. standard. <laughs> That's the standard. Yeah, the spice sort of, you know what it be? It's more, um, I, it's still got a lot of that spice characteristic. Um, Mega, what I think it does is it rounds out the edges. It's there, but it just, it's not a, as aggressive. Yeah. Now, this is another one that I get a little bit of cola in there. It's like a little bit sweet. That little bit of, a, just, uh, you know, which one I got that on was that, that um, uh, High Plains. That, yeah, exactly. Uh, that Jim Rutledge did. Yeah, Jim Rutledge that we just did. Yep. Um, that's another great rye whiskey. If anybody's like one, 55 bucks yep. for that one. I think that one's another nice one. All right. So awesome. now we're going to start going in a, a slightly different direction. The next one is Whistle Pig. John, what's, what's the ABV on this one? Or the, or, the, the proof, or the proof? Uh, this one is 56.5. 56.5. So we're okay. still going up. And yes. this is a lock and key barrel called the, That Sweet. No, Toot Sweet. Toot Sweet, sorry. So this Toot is sweet. this is the magical yeah, yeah. fruit, the fruit that you, the magical candy, the candy that you eat. Um, this one here is, so some of the, some of the stuff coming out of Whistle Pig that's being done in the rye category is MGP. This one is not. This is actually from Alberta, Canada, or the Canada, Can Canada. Canada yeah, yeah our friendly neighbors to the north. Alberta, Alberta. So, um, this is uh, ten year, at least ten years old. I think this one is at ten. So I've seen some that have been higher. We've actually picked some barrels that we know, not picked some barrels. We had some samples that were higher than the ten. They didn't get picked. Um, we're, we we do them blind. We go back and look after. Um, but we, I, I've never seen us change our mind going like, oh, that uh -huh. one's another two years old or we better get that one. It's the best whiskey that we can get. And they gave us a lot. Geo is not down here right now, but we, we had to do a two rounder, which means that we had to taste through two different, we had to split them up. There were so many to choose from at that point. So, um, we were, we were very fortunate that, um, uh, whistle pig had, um, given us a quite bit to choose from. And this is the one we chose. Too sweet. That's great. So not that long. Can you ago, guess why we named it too sweet? That finishes candy. Yeah, all day right? long. All right. So with the other ones finished with a lot of that dry wood spice, this one has a lot of like uh, sweet notes to it, I think. Mm. Shows the spice up front. It's 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 incredible how different these are. I think early on. Right. Early on in my whiskey journey, you know, I, I think rye is probably one of the least categories that I reach for, being like a scotch drinker or bourbon. But I, don't, don't get me wrong, I don't discriminate. I always liked rye, but I always thought the flavor profile was narrow. But I think this right here, just those first two alone, you. really showcases how broad of a range it really can have. That's what we wanted to sort of, I, I sort of wanted to show you guys tonight is that sort of like rye isn't isn't just rye. I will let you know though. So several years back when a lot of people, uh, scotch whiskey was getting, was bumping up in price. And I had a lot of scotch drinkers looking to, for other whiskeys that they could drink and get into. And America was of course a natural way to go. Most of them would not go to bourbon because with that over 51% corn, it tends to show sweetness. 
And usually the, the, believe it or not, the logical jump, even though there's no rye in Scotch malt whiskey, cause it's all malt. Sure. A lot of guys would go and a lot of gals would go to the rye at, for their American whiskey experience because it, it doesn't have the sweetness. It, yeah. it finishes on a drier note. It finishes. It doesn't have a, a sort of a, a sweetness to it. This yeah. particular one does have a little sweetness. I think so. Yep. Anyways, but, or, but or, typically that's the, that would have been the jump would have been to rye whiskeys from people coming from scotch. Or, or the high rye bourbons. High rye bourbons, I, yeah, right. I, I know. Well, they want to knock a little of that sweetness out. Well, well, yeah. I mean, one of the core notes of scotch whiskey is that pepper note, like right down, mm-hmm. like that thread that's right in the core of it. And I think you definitely get that a little bit with the rye. So there's definitely a little bit of a crossover. Well, we, you know, the funny part about it is what's been happening a lot lately too. And we've had this argument. Can, can you actually taste the difference between rye and bourbon anymore? Because they're, they're crossing those lines. Well, they're, quite a bit. They're, they're getting very close to it. So if you get like, if you get something that's a high rye, right, it's got like 51% corn. And then it starts immediately into the rye. You start getting it. You know, a lot of these ones get to yeah, the rye. And then you get a lot of the rye that are not doing 95.5. They're doing, you know, like, like 70, 80% rye and then throwing a corn element in and then throwing barley at the end. You start blurring that line to where one, one is bourbon and the other is rye. Yeah, maybe for maybe some of the newer folks or some of the newer folks watching, maybe we should explain a little bit what a mash bill is about those different levels. So it, it, as the rules go, you basically are going to make, you're making a beer out of, out of, uh, out of grain. Okay. And you're going to ferment that. So you're going to add yeast to it. It's going to get to a certain ABV, um, usually like 12, 13, wherever, it, wherever it falls, it doesn't really matter. And then you're going to distill it after that. Well, that, that, that thing that you're making the beer is you're mashing different grains together. So the mash bill is what makes that up. It's like a recipe. It's a recipe. You're a good job. Yeah. So it, to be bourbon, you have to be 51%, at least 51% corn to be considered, even to be considered bourbon. There were other, what barrel, how long and all that stuff. I'm just talking about the rye mash bill, uh, the, the bash bill right now. Right. You have to be at least 51% corn to be that. On the rye side, to be called rye, you have to be at least 51% rye, okay? So then the rest of them usually follow suit. Like in bourbon, it will be go, it'll be go corn, rye, and then malted barley or corn, wheat, and then malted barley. For a weeder. It was just called a weeder in bourbon. Um, for rye, it's usually anywhere up to there and usually the rest of it. Sometimes it's corn and, and barley and sometimes it's just barley after the rye. All right. Everybody, did I explain that okay? Everybody, all right. If it didn't stay after class, we'll go through it again. <laughs> we- um, 89 99 for that, for that, for the whistle uh, pick, for, for the whistle pick. It's delicious. All right. Yes, sir. It does. Um, it, but it'll tell you where it's from. It is bottled. It is, um, stored and bottled in Vermont. But if you look at the label, John will pick it up. And I think on the back, it says Alberta, um, on there. So they have other oh, stuff. Yeah, it says, well, it says product of Canada, product of Canada. Okay. So they will, ha- they do have, um, they do have uh, different whiskeys that they're doing now that contains Source part of what they're doing up sourced and partial of what they're doing at the at the distillery now. So so they're they're, they're what's that? Farm stock. And they're mixing that in. Okay. Can I can I segue into my Dave Pickerel story? Sure, you can. You can. <laughs> so well, let's let's point out the next one we're doing. It's not technically a rye. But I think that's an American whiskey, if I'm not correct. The blackened. Uh... A blend of straight whiskeys finished in black brandy casks right. by Dave Prickerel. But there is a lot of rye in it. There is a lot of rye in it. And uh, they actually play uh, Metallica, I believe, or some sort of um, vibrations yep. to the barrel for agitation. So if you listen to enough uh, <laughs> so Metallica, you get agitated. So does the whiskey. Uh, and they're using that to... Get sight. <laughs> All right. So that's what they're doing. So, so segue. So, so Dave Pickerel, just so everybody knows, we're doing a back to back Dave Pickerel story here because Dave Pickerel actually helped start Whistle Pig and he helped start Blackened. He, he did. He did. So, so 
Dave Pickerel was here he for away. he did. So uh, unfortunately, Dave Dave Pickerel passed away about two years ago now. Mm -hmm. He was here for whiskey week what was it 2018 2017 yeah we did he did this he's done he did several different class. things for us yes uh, and, over the years and he did a he did a master class during the saturday of that go whiskey week um and it was it was a phenomenal class and like several of us got together at the tables and i know for for those for those of us that were there it second to none and he saw he was such a gentleman nicest guy in the world it, but where my story goes class um, I went upstairs and Dave was doing the radio show. Mm -hmm. And then after the radio show, he was just standing off in the corner. I'm like, all right, this guy is like one of my idols. Can I talk to him? Can I not talk to him? So, 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 you know, stalker, like, stalker, stalker. yeah, he's like, you know, in my world, he's a rock star. <laughs> right. Cause he's done like so much and he's done so many different things and he's so Baker's well Mark. known. Baker's Mark. Of, he's yeah, so, done yeah. so many things in the industry. So I approach him and um, he kind of looked like, wait as a ghost and i'm like are you okay and he's like no i really don't feel so good and i was like oh what can i do and he's like well i need to eat something and i was like okay well there's there's a big food line here and and he was just standing there looking at it he's like so he went to go get up at the end of the line and i'm like dave technically you're working what's you can go to the front of the line let's let's go and i i took him up there and he you know fixed himself up plate and he's standing over by the side and i just kind of stood with him just to just to hang sure did, did, yeah i didn't really say too much you know he took a couple of bites and he's like he's like thank you that's that that's what i needed and he's like i think i'm going to tell you this story but you have to keep it to yourself and i was like okay well you know so so he proceeds to start telling me about this project that he has going on and he's so excited about it you can see his face light up and he's like I am so excited about this. And he's like, I have this project. It already has a name and it's with the famous band Metallica and it's called Blackened. And he's like, it's the next thing I'm doing after I'm phasing out of Whistle Pig. And um, he said, what gave him the idea to do Blackened was his church. His church has a big organ in it. And when they would hit the low note, he said, they could only hit that low note for a second or two because it's like if you held it down, he said it, the, the sonics would literally probably bring down the church. So that's kind of what gave him the idea. So when he, you know, when he when he when he touched base with Metallica, they were setting up a distillery. He was there to help them set up the distillery. Um, he he was able to help source them some of the stuff from from Canada and, and get this whole thing, work out the blend and all that. And then, of course, being Metallica and him thinking of his church in the subsonic level, you know, he um, had got in touch with the pe people who do like the, the subsonic speakers and all yeah. that. And that's in the Metallica playlist. So each batch has its own set of songs. And I believe from the bottle, you can go to the website, you can go to the website and find out which and ones. find out which which set list was actually used to make that that whiskey. But it was so interesting. And he I mean. That was a moment for me. Yeah. And it's one that I've never really talked about, even with some of the guys on the side, because it was just a personal thing right. with, with Dave. And um, But that's the type of guy he was, too, though. <laughs> like, I mean, he really yeah. was that way. Him and I had actually about three different projects we were going to do and that we had basically talked about, and we, they were set in stone. And unfortunately, well, yeah, then he, unfortunately then he passed, and uh, we never get around to he also does some, He also set up the whole Solera system for Hill Rock. That was another one he did too. So the other, so. the other thing that he told me um, that was going to be another project after the blackened one that obviously is not going to come to fruition, but he was also really excited about setting up a master or a distillery school in Louisville with his son. And that was like what his next thing yeah. after blackened was supposed to be. And I was again, like, I think he was even more excited about that because it was going to be a chance to work with his son. Right. And he was, you know, sort of keyed up on. That. Yeah. It yeah. makes me sad. Just thinking about like, right. just seeing the look on his face and how excited he was I, about and that. To, um, to Metallica and the guys at Blacken's credit, Dave Pickerel's name is on the, bottle, the bottle still. Yeah. Um, yes. That's all. Yeah. 
So, I, well, I, I think there's there's a conglomeration they, they of money, but they own it. They own it. They are so, definitely part. Yep. They are involved too, by the way. Yep. They actually they actually started the distillery, and for for those of you that are Metallica fans, um, James Hetfield, who's you know forever an alcoholic, can never taste his own product, and they asked him. They asked him, you know, hey, like, how do you do that? How do you set up a distillery and get whiskey out there? And not know, you know, he's like, well, I have to take the other guy's words for it. That's right. and, and the rest of the band is like very, they, but they are very hands-on from what I understand, very heavily involved. We were supposed to have so. the, we were supposed to have their vehicle come up here, uh, caught on fire. So it will not be coming. <laughs> so there will be a, there will be a Rock black and, and tasting coming up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there will be a black and tasting coming up here soon. So I said, well, I don't know if they'll have the vehicle. We just said, we, that's really great guys, but we want to taste whiskey. So it's fine. Don't worry about it. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yes. The bill goes up black. Yes. All right. So, uh, the next one, uh, so I had put out there that it was something like 50, 60 cases of, um, the project. It's like the master's series project that, that, that black and was putting out. And the first one that they were doing was with Willett with Drew Culbertson. And, and it was supposed to be like, I said, I think I said just under 60 cases were coming to mass. 40, six packs, <laughs> of course, came to Massachusetts. And you got um, 38 of them? Yes. That was my goal. <laughs> that was my goal. We are just, we are trying to get some more. So stay tuned. But I took a bottle off the top so that we could taste it. So if you didn't get one, here's your, here's to try it. If you did get one and you haven't opened it yet, I'll know whether to do that. Um, uh, and and um, so you want to pull that one and, and look at it because yep. this, I don't know what the ABV, and I don't know everything about this one, but it's, it is uh, Madeira finished. 54.8 yep. is the ABV. Uh, Kentucky straight rye whiskey finished in Madeira cask. Madeira cask. Where's the other and one? The, and, and, the, and the rye whiskey is coming from uh, Willet that they're doing it with. So straight means uh, at least uh, two years old. Which what I love is like, the, it's in the spirit of Dave. Four. Like, I'm going to say four. Four? Four. But the, the collaboration. Collaboration. That's what Dave was. All about the whiskey and collaboration yeah. and innovation and collaboration. All right. So innovation and collaboration. And, and, I, and I think uh, you guys try it and see what you think, because I think you're going to get. Oh, the nose is awesome. Wow. I like that. That's really good. That's really cool. I'll call up Drew tomorrow and tell him that <laughs> he did a good job. Nice. I like that definite sweet note, right? You guys all getting that sweet like note on that. But still the classic. It's got like all the classic cry notes. Cry notes in it. It's got that little bit of darker, darker um Look, you almost, do it almost a little bit of chocolate in there a little mm -hmm. bit almost right now that's Coffee. very different rye so yeah some of you may not like that some of you may like that i don't know uh, what do you guys think uh, yes no you, not your cup of tea okay well but that's the whole point you know that's why there's coke and pepsi <laughs> so the regular will it is uh 49.99 and uh, the, we, the only way to buy uh, was to buy the other one was was together. So then one would usually go for around one hundred and fifty to one hundred and seventy five dollars. So it was two hundred. So it was two hundred for the set and a whole card. You had, to, you, had to buy the whole card. you had to buy the two of them together plus a whole card. It's the way we sold it. What's that? What was that last week? I think so. It was yeah, just last a week, week or two ago at the most. It's gone. What's that? Yeah, right there. You tried it. <laughs> I said I pulled the bottle off the top so that we could try it. Well, from now, sir, somebody take a sample. I'm going to try anyone. <laughs> well, what, what I think is like they really shouldn't like it. And then I'll just take just take it. Yeah. 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 So don't that, the rest is going. The rest is going for the radio show because Randall hasn't had it yet. All right. And uh, Dave has a great Dave Pickerel story. Does he? Oh yeah. my God, it's hysterical. Oh, so it, hopefully he, it will. We'll taste it and he'll tell it on the radio. Awesome. We have some really good. We have some really good Drew stories too, uh, from uh, from Willett. So 
Um, so those are those. We are trying to get some more. We're hoping that we, we are talking to the, the guys at Black and to see if we could get some more up here to Massachusetts because, uh, you know, we were, we were so gung-ho about doing the entire lineup from the get-go with, with Dave um, that we're hoping to get some of that up there. All right. We'll try. All we can do is ask. So while we the worst talk- they can say is no. They can't kill me yet. They can only say no. When we, when we get to this last one here, I do want to mention something from your radio show last week talking about the supply chain. Okay. Well, we can so. certainly do that. So um, the last one that we're doing um, dessert is dessert in a bottle. Oh. <laughs> so, and this is why it's, it's last up here. All right. So the last one is um, Angel's Envy, Rye, aged in Caribbean rum cask. And there's nothing like this out there. This is awesome. This is uh, it's 50% ABV. It, it, I'm just going to point this out. When you smell this, just the nose, I'm like maple syrup, right? Yeah. Like good Vermont totally. maple syrup. I mean, totally. Almost dead on. I might get me some syrup later. That's how much this is reminding me of that. Two, two years ago, we crushed a lot of this at a Thanksgiving outing I had. Hey, Kavork. You want to pour everybody uh, a drink of that? Does everybody get like what on the palate, what the nose knows? I mean, there's like, there's just. So does it translate? Mm, it does. For you? So I get I get maple syrup on the nose. When you taste it, is it tr- does th- uh, does that translate? What the nose knows? Yeah, I, I get. So when I drink it, I get when I smell it, I get maple. I get maple syrup. When I drink it, I get cinnamon. I still get the maple in there. I get the I maple, it. but I get cinnamon. The, absolutely, that's the added like sort of the added spice that, that 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 comes off of that. What's that? Cinnamon finish. Yeah. Yeah. But it's. Yeah, it's like dessert. It, it really is. I and, mean, you know, I, I, I would I would serve this over a cordial any day <laughs> at my house anyway. Oh, yeah. On a, on a warm on a warm, uh, warm night, you can there's so much flavor in this and you can't sort of kill it. You can um, you can definitely uh, put this on a, a big rock yeah. and chill it down a little bit or put it in the, the, the freezer for a while and get it cold. The flavor profile mm. definitely holds out on this one. Oh, great. So you bought it as a birthday present. It would go over well. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's so, fantastic bottle. so everybody, um, just hold on a second. So that is our, that, that's, um, I believe that's, I want to say 89.99. Yeah, that's about right. That's right. About right. Um, on the last one. So there's my, there's Ryan's selection of rise for this evening. Uh, we're going to end the Facebook live. I hope everybody that followed along at home. Uh, got some got something out of it. Um, you can get any of these. Like I said, we have all the prices. These are actually all in stock except for the black and will it, unfortunately. Hopefully we'll get some more of that. But I want to thank everybody for showing up for Whiskey Wednesday tonight. You guys stay. I got something special for you. So everybody stay. I'm going to I'm going to end our Facebook live part. And we got something special for you guys. <laughs>